Avast there! I'm Axel Wilkinson, and recently I put together a tutorial about creating fireworks using mobile emitters in HitFilm 2 Ultimate. This is the promised and dubiously anticipated sequel where we will finish the firework effects by digging into the lifetime panel. We've included a project file for you to download and follow along, so please open that up now. Even if you went through the mobile emitters tutorial earlier and saved that project, I encourage you to use the included project as there's a few things we'll modify from where we left off from the previous tutorial. So let's start in the fireworks project by playing back the timeline to refresh our brains a bit about what the effect looks like. Okay, so we have the basic shape, but the finer details of the movement and the appearance still need to be dialed in. The first thing I want to adjust is the alpha of the various elements. In the appearance controls, we have an alpha property, but this only affects new particles that are generated. So if we keyframe a change in this value, then any new particles that are created will take on the alpha value that exists at the frame of their birth. But we want to change the alpha of existing particles over the course of their life. And for this, we need to use the lifetime panel, which opens up new worlds of possibilities for particle effects. If you don't see the lifetime panel right away, then go into the menu here and make sure that its visibility is enabled so that you can access that. The controls which are displayed in the lifetime panel will correspond to whichever mobile emitter or particle system is currently selected. So, in the controls panel, select the Sparks particle system and then open the lifetime tab. You'll see a list of various properties and as we select each one, either a graph or a gradient will appear which allows us to edit that property. So let's select the alpha property and in the type menu, choose gradient. In the lifetime panel, the left hand edge represents the birth of the particle and the right hand edge represents its death. And so then however long the particle's lifetime is, is covered by this span in between. So right now, if we open the movement properties, you can see we have a life of one second. So in this gradient, it would take one second to change from whatever color is assigned here to whatever color happens here. If we change this to five seconds, then it will take five seconds to go through the same graph. We can click anywhere below this bar with the hand icon to add a new keyframe to the gradient. We want these sparks to gradually fade out over their entire lifetime. So click below the right end of the gradient to add a new keyframe and then drag that keyframe all the way to the right. You can see its location now is at 100%. Now select the original keyframe, which you can see has a location of 50%, and we'll drag that all the way to the left. Now if you play through the effect once again from the beginning, you can see that it fades out much more smoothly. Now let's edit the alpha for the missiles. So select the missiles mobile emitter, and now when we select the alpha, we're in a lifetime panel for this mobile emitter. So switch the type to gradient, and this time we don't want the fade to start until almost the end of their life, and then they should fade very quickly. So let's add a second keyframe again at the right, which should be black for anything related to alpha channels. White is opaque, black is transparent. So we want the particles to go from opaque to transparent, but we want it to happen right at the end of their lifetime. So move the white keyframe until its location is at 90%. Okay, so now the gradient, which represents the fade out of the particle, happens right in the last 10% of its lifetime. So if we find the end of, here these lights at the end of each of these trails are the missiles themselves. And if we just scrub through, you can see how now they have a quick little fade out there right at the end of their life instead of just blinking off. Now let's adjust the timing of this effect. We want to make these mobile emitters start out quickly and then slow down as they progress. So we still have the missiles selected. So let's scroll down and select their speed property. Now speed uses a graph rather than a gradient. And we can place keyframes anywhere along this line to adjust the speed of the particles over the course of their life. These white squares represent keyframes. We have one by default. And if we select it, we get its position along the life of the particle. So it's 50% of the way through whatever the life setting is. And its speed is 100% of whatever speed value is assigned in the controls panel. 
Notice that there are several preset shapes above the graph. Go ahead and click through those and you can see how they create slightly different shapes to that graph using keyframes. Now with this one, notice that we actually have a curve in the graph. You can right click on any keyframe to convert it to a corner or to convert it to smooth. And then when you convert to smooth, you get a Bezier handle, which you can use to adjust the shape of the curve on that effect. We're going to use this first preset as our starting point, which gives us two control points providing an even speed of 100% throughout the lifetime. We want to add a new keyframe at 30%. So go ahead and click to where you think is close to 30%. I missed by one. And we'll go ahead and just edit these values to get exact. You'll find that entering text values here is very handy. So set it to a life of 30% and a speed of 100%. And then select the first keyframe and drag that up to 400. You probably won't be able to drag it to exactly 400 and 399% is probably close enough. But if you want to set an exact value, you can enter in the value there. Now, if we play the timeline once again, you'll see the effect spreads more quickly and gets larger overall due to that speed boost right at the start of the mobile emitter's lives. Now, let's select this missile's mobile emitter. I'm gonna close it and we're gonna duplicate that and rename the duplicate to end bursts. If you went through the mobile emitters tutorial, you might remember doing this step in that tutorial as well. We're just redoing that now so that the changes we made in the lifetime panel are now also present in this end bursts effect. Now open the general controls for the end bursts and set the activation event to death. This creates the end bursts for each of our spark trails. So if we play through the effect, these little bursts are being created by this second emitter. Let's make a few adjustments to improve those bursts now, mainly just to get them larger. So first, let's open up the particle system here, and since we already used the name Sparks in our missiles, let's rename this particle system to End Burst Sparks. And then we will change their life in the movement properties to three seconds. Go ahead and scooch this over so we can read those better. Now change the speed to 100%. You can see that those bursts have gotten a little bigger now. Open the appearance controls and we'll change the texture to sparks star. And now play the effect back again from the beginning. Okay, that's looking a little bit better as a firework effect. Now let's use the lifetime panel to animate the color of these end burst sparks. So select the end burst sparks and in the lifetime panel, choose the color property. I'm sure that left to your own devices, you could create a gradient here with two or more colors, but we're going to look at these controls down here with this property. The mix with appearance menu has three options, off, first keyframe, and last keyframe. This lets us take whatever color is selected in the controls panel. In this case, it's a light blue that we have here. And it lets us apply this as the first keyframe or the last keyframe of our color gradient. So rather than adding a second color point, we're going to use the first keyframe option from the mix with appearance menu. Then we'll edit the existing keyframe. Let's drag that to 100% on the location. And then with that keyframe selected, we can either sample a color from somewhere in the viewer perhaps, or you can just click here to get a color picker. And let's choose a bright red, shall we? So now with this first keyframe option selected, this blue color basically exists as a keyframe at 0% location and then it's going to gradate from that blue to our red frame here. So if we scrub through the timeline, you can see that transition happening in those particles. Now, if we were to drag this farther to the left, then the transition to red happens much more quickly. And so essentially, if we were to drag this all the way to the left, the particles start out as red because the blue keyframe from the mix with appearance exists immediately before the red. And so there's no time for a transition to happen. So if you're using the first keyframe option, then make sure and leave some space with no keyframes on the left side of the graph. Similarly, if you're using the last keyframe option, then you wanna leave some space over here. So that wraps up our look at the lifetime panel. 
we'll play that effect back again. There's lots of other controls as well in the lifetime panel, of course. And we're not going to look at all of them, but this look should give you a sense of how to edit any of them into your particle effects. We're going to shift directions a bit now and add some gravity to this effect using a force. So to start with, let's add a new force by clicking this little icon with the plus sign next to forces. By default, the new force is set up as gravity, so this is convenient. But if you open the type controls and scroll down there, here's the options. And let's just jump back and play this effect. And you can see that it's a bit much, really. It's pulling things down much too quickly. So let's dial this in. In the type controls for the force, let's set its strength to 1%. That brings things back up significantly. You can play that again, and we see a marked improvement, but it's not quite there yet. So now we can adjust each element of our effect and how it interacts with the gravity. This can be done in the general controls for each mobile emitter or particle system. So first, the missiles. The gravity gives a nice subtle curve to the flight of the missiles, but we don't want these trails in the middle to fall the way they do. So we'll leave the missiles as they are, but for the sparks, open the general controls and we'll disable the affected by forces option. So now the path of the mobile emitters is curved by the gravity, but the individual sparks themselves are not affected. Now for the end bursts. So we'll close the missiles, open the end bursts. We do want the sparks here to fall, but not quite as fast as they are now. So what we'll do is adjust the mass of these particles, which is done in the movement controls. Mass might seem a bit counterintuitive at first, because you might think that the more mass you give something, the heavier it is, the faster it will fall. But that's not how the forces actually work. In point of fact, the more mass an object has, the less of an effect outside forces will have on it. It helps if you stop thinking in terms of gravity, which we're using for this effect, and think of the force as perhaps the force of you kicking an object. If you kick a football, it's likely to move a significant distance, right? Now, take a rock the same size as the football and kick the rock. It didn't move as far, did it? That's because the rock's mass is much greater. So the force of a puny human kicking it has much less effect. And that's the relationship between mass and force. The greater the mass of an object, the less of an effect a force will have when the force hits the object. It's a physics thing. So, back to hit film. If we increase the mass of our end burst sparks, then the force we have set up will have less of an effect on them. In this case, we don't need to change it much. Set the mass to 3, and things should look much better when we play this back. Okay, one more adjustment and we'll be done. As the end burst occurs, it would be nice if the momentum of the missiles was inherited by the end burst sparks. So these missiles are traveling outward, but then at the moment when they burst, it's like all that outward momentum stops and they just pop in place. Well, we want that momentum to affect the sparks that are flying out here. So in the general controls for the end burst sparks, find the velocity from emitter control and let's increase that to 15%. You could crank it up higher if you wanted even more speed, but I think that 15% works well. And there you have it. One firework for all your digital festivities. You can save this effect as a preset by right-clicking and choosing Create 3D Preset. And what I recommend is tweaking this effect a bit further on your own. Take this layer and just duplicate the layer. You could do that a bunch of times. And then take each copy, hide the others and work on one at a time, and try experimenting with changing the colors, the timing, the number of particles, or any of the other settings that you want to mess with to create variations on the effect. Try different emitter shapes, different textures, or different trajectories. All of these will allow you to come up with unique firework effects based on this construct, so you can have some variety in the effect or create the specific type of firework that you need for your shots. When you come up with something cool, please share it with us on YouTube or on hitfilm.com. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it, and stay tuned to our channel for more.